One of the questions I get asked about an awful lot is alcohol and hangovers. How to rid yourself of them and how to party hard without doing lasting damage to your body. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about hangovers and how to rid yourself of them once and for all and how to mitigate the detrimental impacts of going out and drinking alcohol on your body in the long term. So guys, I know how it can totally suck to be that guy in a nightclub holding a bottle of water, chewing some gum, and resisting the urge or social pressure to drink either shots, wine, whatever it may be, cocktails going around the party, because you know that the next morning you're gonna wake up feeling absolutely horrid, and then from there in regards to your work day, it's gonna be totally compromised. Perhaps you've really tried the old school method of chasing your, your beer, your wine, your shots that you're drinking with a ton of water, or coconut water, or Gatorade, or whatever it may be, and you thought that would work, but you've had no benefit of that. Or you've tried one of those alcohol-free, oh-so-sugary alternative benefits to skip the alcohol aspect of things, but instead ensure pre-diabetes with the consumption of that drink. Or you bought some pill from the pharmacy that guarantees it's gonna help you metabolize alcohol, but paradoxically, it totally fucks up your sleep cycles. So you guys know at this point that none of these options are working. So I'm gonna be talking to you guys specifically as business owners, six and seven figure business owners, or anyone wanting to optimize their performance in the workspace, about how to mitigate a hangover and the long lasting effect of alcohol the next day. Having been out partying or drinking with your, with your friends, or whether it be in terms of the seasonal festivities which are coming up as we're approaching the Christmas period. I mean, let's be honest guys, after all, if you're young, developing a business which is generating six or seven figures, you are likely to want to enjoy a party every now and then, that's totally fine. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you guys the hacks, the tips, and the tricks that I utilize personally and my clients also utilize to mitigate the detrimental impacts of consuming alcohol, having a good night out with your friends, enjoying yourself to ensure that for the next working day, we are set up and optimized, ready to rock and roll. Now, a word of caution, this protocol may leave you feeling invincible. It may even reduce the deleterious and increase the pleasurable aspects of drinking alcohol, but that does not mean you should drink more, okay? Enjoy the buzz, maintain the buzz, have a good night, do not drink more. I cannot vouch for your safety past that point. So, how hangovers happen in the first place? Now, I really do not want to bore you guys with too much scientific information or context in this manner, but I think it is important you guys are aware of what happens to the body when you consume alcohol and when you're in a hungover state, okay? So, I could really dig deep into the science of how alcohol works. That sounds more like a boring term paper and less like a fun biohacking video that I'm making for you guys. So I'm going to keep the section fairly brief and more towards a three slide range. Okay. Your pituitary glands, kidneys, and of course, liver are all affected by alcohol consumption, which can lead to a whole host of side effects like nausea, diarrhea, and the dreaded hangover headache. Most people think that hangovers are the result of dehydration. But even if you have followed the golden age advice of drinking a glass of water for each alcoholic beverage you consume, you can still wake up feeling less than stellar. This is because dehydration is just one factor in a hangover, okay? Your pituitary gland normally produces antidiuretic hormone, ADH, which increases your blood pressure by causing your body to retain water. When you drink alcohol, your pituitary glands churn out less ADH, so you stop retaining so much water, which is one reason the bathroom line is so long at parties and at nightclubs. But as soon as your buzz begins to wear off, ADH production increases once again, which causes a rebound of fluid retention, swollen hands and feet, a puffy face and a headache as blood pressure rises, which you guys may often suffer from the day after going out, or you often feel fairly, uh, fairly watery and a little bit more fat as such on the day after a night out, okay? At the same time, your kidneys pump out more of the enzyme renin and hormone aldosterone. This promotes the secretion of vasopressin, which increases blood pressure by inducing sodium retention and potassium loss. This is why people with heart problems are most prone to a heart attack when they have a hangover. The cardiovascular system goes into electrolyte roller coaster hyperdrive for trying to retain fluids in the body. And that's not all. Cortisol works with aldosterone to balance electrolyte levels. So when you are hungover, your body pumps out more cortisol, which is stress-related hormone. Okay, if you guys aren't aware of that. This not only contributes to even more food retention, but also raises blood sugar levels by converting amino acids into glucose in your liver, a process known as gluconeogenesis. As blood sugar levels rise, the pancreas produces more insulin, resulting in abnormal stress on both the pancreas and liver. These elevated levels of cortisol can also cause catabolism, a term that you guys will know if you come from like a bodybuilding background, as well as redistribution of body fat from legs and arms to your belly. Oh yes, and there's still more. One more slide here. Finally, most alcoholic beverages contain cognages, which significantly contribute to hangover symptoms. Cognages, which are found in high concentrations in dark colored liquors like brandy, wine, dark tequila, and whiskey contain free radicals and positively charged molecules that can significantly disrupt your acid alkaline or otherwise pH balance and increase your body's need to step up antioxidant activity to scavenge all of those free radicals. 
As your body goes into flight or flight mode to help you handle all of these cognages, you'll face intestinal issues, nausea, headaches, sweatiness, clamminess, and or chills. Okay. In addition, a night of partying or excessive alcohol intake can cause the type of dehydration that specifically lowers endurance performance and strength gains the next day, which is why if you guys go to the gym the next day, you often feel like absolute dog shit. <laughs> okay. Inhibition of melatonin secretion and subsequent disruption of sleep cycles and deep restorative sleep. As you guys know, if you wake up after a night of partying or a night of alcohol consumption, you often feel like absolute crap. And the last thing you want to do is leave your bed, which is probably a little bit hot and sweaty because of the effect that alcohol consumption has on your body temperature as well. OK, uh, I also discussed in my last video with one of my clients, Adrian, on my high performing clients, um, the detrimental effect that alcohol consumption can have on REM sleep, which is going to be part of your restorative sleep. OK, and also finally, an impressive improvement in body composition and fat loss, even if you exercise. Okay, obviously that's total bollocks. I wanted to add that in there just to make sure you guys are paying attention at this point of the video. We're going to skip the scientific part now and dive into the fun stuff. So in the days leading up to the party, what should you guys be putting into place? First and foremost, sleeping well, okay? Every tissue in your body has a circadian clock keeping rhythm. For your organs to work properly, you need to sleep well and sleep consistently. Big nights out will throw that into a disarray. So in the days leading up to a day, uh, late night, proper sleep hygiene is vital. Do not mess this up, people. Get this into place straight away. If you guys are not already, make sure you're wearing wearables at night to track your sleep and obviously your, your sleep performance. And then obviously you can then assess the variables that contribute to your sleep hygiene as well. Limit omega-6 fats. Emphasize MUFAs and SFAs. Animal study after animal study confirmed that high omega-6 feeding increases liver damage response to ethanol, while more stable fats like cocoa butter and coconut oil protect against it. And if you do eat omega-6, make sure they're in whole food form like nuts, seeds, eggs, etc. Day of the party. Train hard and go for a brisk walk. Exercise upregulates antioxidant activity and, at least in rats, actively reduces alcohol damage. I'm a massive believer in this protocol as well, considering that I train on almost uh, at least five days per week. I'm a massive believer in this protocol once I am going out for a party. Eat five egg yolks and some liver. Your liver will be burning through its choline stock, so be sure to top them off. Choline supplementation also works well here. Choline is so important for alcohol metabolism that it can even prevent fetuses against maternal alcohol ingestion. And obviously, guys, I'm, you're, my audience that I'm targeting here and then obviously producing this content for aren't individuals that are necessarily pregnant, but it's still something to be aware of and obviously the, the impact that it can have. An hour before the party, eat a teaspoon or a tablespoon each of extra virgin olive oil, extra virgin olive oil and red palm oil. Sorry, avocado oil, virgin olive oil and red palm oil. The polyphenols in extra virgin olive oil and avocado oil and the vitamin E in red palm oil protect against alcohol induced oxidative stress and the monostrated and saturated fats and all three protect the liver against alcohol-induced injury, okay? Eat a light to moderate meal. You want food in your stomach to slow the absorption of alcohol. You guys know this often. If you guys are going out, you'll often go for a cheeky meal with your mates in the restaurant or maybe like a, a pub nearby. I don't know where you guys go out um, just to obviously mitigate the effect that alcohol has on your system. If you flood your body with too much ethanol too fast, the conversion into highly toxic asset aldehyde will overwhelm your antioxidant defenses. Make sure you sort your food as well. Okay. Apologies for the mispronunciation there. Asset aldehyde. And then from there, obviously I'm talking about supplementation here that we can be utilizing. So for example, magnesium, incorporate that. Alcohol depletes magnesium. It's actually how we become tolerant to alcohol subjective effects. For example, incorporating variables like consuming a couple of uh, squares of dark chocolate as well. And then from there, vitamin C as well. Okay. These are just a few supplements you guys can be uh, utilizing an hour before going out partying obviously mitigate the effect that alcohol has on our systems. Um, I'm going to be highlighting a list of supplements you guys can incorporate as well. Um, I'll probably put that in the in the bio below, I think most likely. Uh, and then for my clients, I'll be obviously putting that into place with them in terms of their systems and structures. Okay, finally, eat some polyphenol-rich plants and spices, turmeric, ginger, berries, beets, anything pungent and or colorful will be good for your alcohol metabolism, but don't stack all of the spices and plants. Essentially, if obviously... Um, this doesn't necessarily work in regards to the compounding effect. Much of the benefit comes from hormesis or the benefit to response to acute stresses. So eating a tablespoon of all of the above won't necessarily be much of a good thing for you guys to be doing. OK, and finally, have a cup of green tea. Green tea contains polyphenols that protect against ethanol induced oxidative stress. So what do you guys what should you guys be drinking on a night out? This is a question that I'm always asked by uh, my clients and it's something that I thought I'd raise in this video today. Is alcohol good for you? Not really. Alcohol has an aging effect on the body because the liver breaks it down into aldehyde, the most damaging alcohol toxin. 
Adding sugar ensures a much more negative impact on the body and alcohols also contain other toxins to make uh, that make you feel and perform even worse the next day. And obviously this is what we're looking to mitigate for you guys in the high performance space or you guys running a business or working in a corporate structure that wants to perform well after going out. This means that if you drink, there are better choices you can make to feel better and remain healthier. Highly filtered and distilled drinks remove toxins so your liver and kidneys don't have to do the work. So what's drink? So as you guys can see here, I've created more of a list from good all the way down to bad, <laughs> or rather the better down to the worse in terms of the list of alcohols you guys can be consuming. Again, I like the color coding aspect of things. I'll be taking you guys through each alcoholic beverage as we go through this video. So the following list highlights a wide profile of alcoholic beverages available to us. The drink at the top of the list will have the most minimal negative impact on your system. The drinks further towards the latter end of this list are more toxic to your system. So vodka, gin, tequila, whiskey, other unsweetened spirits, dry cider, dry champagne, dry white wine, liquors, coloured, sweetened spirits, red wine, beer and lager. So vodka, uh, obviously this being the least uh, negative for us to be consuming, is distilled and it has a charcoal filter, so your body will only deal with the alcohol and no other toxins. But if you mix it with sugar and other stuff, it's not going to be uh, any longer the best choice to be consuming. Okay. Gin. Flavoured by juniper berries, which have antioxidants, but not that many. A thousand years ago, it was considered herbal medicine, but today it's just a popular drink. Tequila. I'm not going to read you guys through this. If you guys would like this presentation afterwards, let me know in the comments below and I can send it through to you guys. Whiskey. Other unsweetened spirits. Dry cider. Dry champagne. Dry white wine. Liquors. Coloured sweetened spirits. Red wine. Beer and lager. And what we can be incorporating right prior to bed is so hugely important in terms of mitigating the detrimental impacts of consuming alcohol, enjoying a night out and a hangover subsequently. So guys, the next part of this video. Okay, so one of the questions I often get asked is what can I consume right prior to bed to obviously mitigate the detrimental impacts of drinking and then from there subsequently reduce the impact of hang hang having a hangover. And often after a night out, you guys will often go for like a, a cheeky kebab or a cheeky food, cheeky bit of food, um, whether it be takeout, whatever it may be. Please avoid just, please avoid um, doing this, okay, at all costs. I'm going to talk about the protocol we can put in place here for you guys in terms of what you should be consuming right prior to bed. So mix half a teaspoon of, uh, a tablespoon of salt, sorry, teaspoon of sea salt, juice from one lime or lemon and 12 ounces of water. Uh, drink 30 minutes prior to bed to give yourself enough time to urinate. Uh, eat 200 milligrams of magnesium. Eat banana with salty nut butter. It might even be time to pull out the tub of peanut butter if you guys have it. Uh, and don't worry about the, the whole aspect, the paleo aspect associated with this. Um, take three grams of melatonin also. Okay, so alcohol reduces melatonin secretion, which is a, a contributing factor to early awakenings. Okay, so obviously if you guys don't know this, melatonin being a sleep-related hormone. Don't worry about taking melatonin late at night in discordance with your regular circadian rhythm. This one time is about improving your sleep and reducing alcohol-induced oxidative stress, which melatonin fights. In the morning, you should be feeling great, obviously having incorporated all the variables I've discussed already. If not, here's what to do. Drink the pre-bread drink from last night, mix up another batch and send it down the hatch. As I've already incorporated it, okay. Eat two charred corn tortillas with salted butter. Now this is an interesting one that most of you guys wouldn't have done before. So charred starch provides an activated charcoal effect. It seems to soak up any residual toxins floating around. And some say burnt toast works well, but the last thing I want you guys to be introducing to an upset hungover stomach is a big dose of gluten, okay? So put those tortillas, direct, tortillas directly over a gas flame or just heat them up, whatever you can do, uh, until they singe and blacken on both sides. You can put a little bit of butter and eat them and maybe serve with eggs if you guys want to, okay? Activated charcoal probably works, but I like getting something to eat personally speaking, okay? Five steps to hack your hangover in summary. So... Step one, choose your poison. The type of drink you choose can make a huge difference in how you feel the next morning. And in reference to that, guys, obviously you have this list here, okay? In regards to the good to the bad, in terms of alcohols you can be consuming on a night out, okay? If you guys want this presentation as well, I will be uh, giving it three, uh, to you guys for free as like a free resource. So uh, check it out as well. But let, let me know in the comments below. Step two, hydrate. I recommend drinking a glass of water for every serving of alcohol you consume, ideally at the same time or right after. Obviously, um, alcohol, the dehydration aspect of things isn't necessarily the only variable we need to be considering, but this will benefit you more so in regards to hydration and mitigating effects of consuming alcohol. Step three, take vitamin C. Before each drink, take one vitamin C tablet. These are all mini hacks you guys can be consuming. This will help block the conversion of alcohol into aldehyde, the most hangover-causing metabolites that also causes very fast aging, wrinkles, etc. 
Step four, take activated charcoal or, in this instance here, eat two charred corn tortillas with salted butter. Okay. And step five, bonus supplements. Take glutathione, B vitamins, alpha lipoic acid, and obviously N-acetylcysteine. Okay, guys. So in conclusion, uh, make sure you guys utilize these hacks, these tips, and these tricks. Okay. And then from there, if you guys want any further content in regards to the alcohols you should be consuming, as I briefly skimmed through this aspect of things in today's video, obviously the list of good to bad. Um, I don't want to be taking you guys through the exact details of each alcohol being consumed because I find that to be a little bit more tedious. But yeah, if you guys want that in a presentation format, let me know in the comments below and I can obviously pass that through to you guys. And until then, I shall see you in the next video. So those are a few of the ways that I drink alcohol, avoid hangovers and party hard without doing long lasting damage to my body, guys. OK, good luck applying these protocols. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below for myself. Like this video, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. I shall see you in the next one.